On this episode of Black Girl Gone, I tell the stories of two missing women, Crystal Journey and Kennedy Walton. Crystal Journey was 39 years old when she disappeared on December 22nd, 2021 from New Orleans, Louisiana. The day Crystal was last seen, she was supposed to be going to a concert with her ex-boyfriend. But Crystal never returned home, and no one knows if she ever made it to the concert. Over a year and a half after she was last seen, Crystal is still missing. Kennedy Walton was 26 years old when she disappeared from St. Louis, Missouri on March 4th, 2022. The night that she was last seen, Kennedy was in Bellevue, Illinois, helping her mom, who had recently gotten out of the hospital. But that night, Kennedy decided to go out to celebrate a friend's birthday. But after they left the bar, Kennedy disappeared. Six days later, the car she was driving was found abandoned two miles away from where she lived in St. Louis, Missouri. Fifteen months later, Kennedy is still missing. What happened to these two women, and who is responsible for their disappearances? This is Crystal and Kennedy's story. By now, if you've been listening to this show for a while, you know the stories of the missing often have the least amount of information. But what we do know can be useful if the information is shared. This week, I'm bringing you the stories of two women who have been missing for well over a year, And although neither story has gotten a lot of attention, there are things that we know about their disappearances that may lead police to finding out exactly what happened. Crystal Journey is a mom of three who has been missing for over a year and a half. Her disappearance has been a devastating loss for her children who just want to know what happened to their mom. And after all this time, they deserve to get those answers. We know that people don't just vanish. Something happens to them. And for a loving mother of three to just stop communication with her children is a sign that something is wrong. Crystal is originally from New Orleans. She was born January 25th, 1982. Her sister told Dateline last year when she was interviewed about Crystal's disappearance that her sister was a free spirit. She has three children, her oldest daughter, Dominice, and two sons. Her daughter described her mom as goofy, loving, caring, and someone who loves to have fun. Dominice, who is now an adult in her 20s, said that her mom is her best friend. In 2021, Crystal was living with her mom in New Orleans, where she was raising her sons. There hasn't been much information shared about Crystal's life, The information that we do know is mostly about her disappearance and her relationship with her ex, who was the last person she was known to be with. Now, according to the information we have, on December 22nd, 2021, Crystal made plans to go to a concert. Dominice said that her mom loved music, and so going to concerts was something that she did often. The artist that was performing was a rapper named Fredo Bang, and the concert was being held at the Sanger Theater in New Orleans. Dominique said that she spoke to her mom that morning. Crystal had recently had a procedure a few days before and had been resting when she called. She said they didn't talk on the phone long because she didn't want to disturb Crystal. Dominique said that she told her mom that she would talk to her later, but that was the last time that she spoke to her mom. Now, Crystal, according to her family, was planning to go to the concert with her ex-boyfriend, Roosevelt Marshall, a man that she had dated on and off for several years. However, her family said at that time, they were off. It's not clear whose idea it was to go to the concert together or why Crystal decided to go with Roosevelt, but nonetheless, the plan was for him to pick her up. At around 7 p.m., Crystal left her mom's house and got into Roosevelt's black Toyota Avalon. What happened next is not known. That night, Crystal did not return back home. Her daughter said that she tried to call her mom, but she wasn't answering the phone, something that was very unlike her to do. She always answered the phone. 
Now, Manise also said that Crystal would have her location on her phone, too, so that she knew where she was. But when she checked her mom's location, it had been turned off. She knew that something was wrong. Not only was Crystal not answering her phone or responding to texts, her location on her phone was turned off. By the time Christmas Day came, it had been two full days since anyone had spoken to Crystal. And her daughter was now in a full-blown panic. On December 25th, Christmas Day, 2021, Dominice called her aunt crying. Crystal's sister told Dateline that her niece called her that day and told her that she hadn't been able to get in contact with her mom. Warlette, Crystal's sister, said that it wasn't exactly unusual for Crystal to not come home for a few days. Sometimes she would hang out with friends and spend the night. But what was unusual was her not answering the phone, especially for her daughter. Warlette said that she asked her mom if she had talked to Crystal, but she had not spoken to her either. And so she got off the phone with her niece and tried to call Crystal herself. But like her daughter, she was getting no answer, no response. The fact that Crystal was not responding to any calls or texts from them was alarming. When the day went by and Crystal still had not returned or responded to their communications, her family went to the police to file a missing persons report. On December 26, 2021, a missing persons report was filed with the New Orleans PD. Her family informed police about the last time that Crystal was seen and who she was seen with. The first question in Crystal's disappearance to answer was, did she actually make it to the concert? Her family said that they tried to get surveillance footage from the theater where the concert was held, but they were unable to get it. Not knowing whether she ever made it to the concert left a big hole in this case. But in the days and weeks after Crystal was reported missing, disturbing information about her relationship with Roosevelt began to shine a new light on Crystal's disappearance. Like I said before, Crystal and Roosevelt had been dating on and off for several years. But according to court records attained by the media, their relationship was abusive and Roosevelt had been accused of physically assaulting Crystal on several occasions. Her sister said that they're not really sure how long the two dated, but Dominice said that she remembered first meeting Roosevelt when she was about 16. At first, she said that he seemed like a nice guy. Quote, he portrayed to be like a good guy. I mean, sweet, caring, that's how he came off, she told Dateline. But eventually, he began to show his true colors. Quote, I started to realize that's not exactly who he was, she also said. When Crystal first went missing, police did not identify Roosevelt Marshall as the last person seen with her, referring to him as a quote-unquote male known to her. But two weeks after she was last seen, a local CBS station obtained court records detailing the alleged domestic violence between the couple— According to the documents, warrants were issued for Roosevelt on two separate occasions in 2020. On August 2nd, 2020, Roosevelt was arguing with Crystal because he believed that she was trying to break up with him. He then took the keys to a rental car that she was driving and got in the driver's seat. Crystal allegedly tried to grab the wheel, but Roosevelt accelerated, dragging her until she let go. Crystal said that when she went home, the car was parked near her house, but Roosevelt was gone. Crystal called police and, according to reports, told them that they had a history of domestic violence. She had just never reported it. She told them, quote, every day he intimidates me. It's getting worse. After that incident, Roosevelt was charged with unauthorized use of a movable and aggravated assault. Now, the second incident took place a few months later on December 10th, 2020. According to the report, Crystal told police that they were again in a verbal argument when this time Roosevelt began punching her in the face. Crystal said that she tried to get out of the car that they were riding in, but he grabbed the scarf that she was wearing. She did eventually manage to get out of the car and run away, but he chased her, and she fell in a grassy area, and that's when he allegedly straddled her and began punching her in the face again. 
He then just got back in his car and left. That time, he was charged with simple domestic battery. Now, once information about the domestic abuse came to light, police on January 6, 2022, named Roosevelt Marshall a person of interest in Crystal's disappearance. They said that he was not wanted on criminal charges in connection to this case, but they did want to talk to him. Eventually, although it's not clear when, Roosevelt was found and was arrested on domestic violence and other charges. But as for Crystal's disappearance, it's not clear if Roosevelt has said anything about what happened to her after he picked her up. When asked by the media for updates about this case and the investigation, police will only say that it is an open and active investigation. However, in the months after her disappearance, there was very little information about Crystal's case. Her family did their best to search for her, turning to social media for help in locating information. And in April 2022, Crystal's story got some national attention when her family was interviewed by Dateline as part of their Missing in America series. At the time, the family said that they had hired a private investigator to help in their search. Sadly, however, nothing has led them to what happened to Crystal. In August 2022, eight months after she was last seen, Dominice was interviewed by the local NBC News, and she said this about her mother's case. As long as I'm alive, I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to keep doing whatever I could. Us as a family are going to keep doing whatever we could to bring her home, to find her, to find closure and get justice. I really just want justice. Like, I want closure with this situation. Whether it's, like, to the point, like, I hate to say it like this, to whether it's good or bad. I just want to know something. How do you go on with life not knowing where your mom is? And we don't even know where she's at. We don't know where she's, she's alive or dead. Is she just like trapped like we don't know nothing i would really be at more at peace to know what happened and where she's at than to not know nothing at all it's now been 20 long months since crystal left to go to a concert and mysteriously vanished without a trace the year 2022 brought with it some investigations and media coverage but despite all the efforts very little substantial information about her disappearance came to light the uncertainty surrounding her whereabouts has been a heavy burden on her family, who continued to endure a relentless and heart-wrenching battle to find answers and bring her home. From the moment Crystal went missing, her family's world was turned upside down. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months, and still no sign of her. The not knowing the constant worry and the sleepless nights have taken a toll on her loved ones, leaving them grappling with a range of emotions, from hope to despair, from anger to resignation. As time goes on, the pain of not having answers lingers, but her family refuses to give up hope. They continue to keep her name alive, knowing that even the smallest lead could be the key to solving the mystery of her disappearance. There is someone out there that can bring closure to this family. Crystal Journey was last seen on December 22nd, 2021 in New Orleans, Louisiana. She was wearing a black hat, cream-colored dress, and black boots. She is 5 foot 5 and at the time of her disappearance weighed 190 pounds. If you have any information about Crystal's disappearance, please contact the New Orleans Police Department. Our second story this week is Kennedy's. It's been less than a year and a half since Kennedy was last seen. And since then, her family, like Crystal's, has been on a desperate search to find her. Kennedy was raised in Belleville, Illinois, by her mother and is the oldest of three girls. As the oldest, Kennedy fully embraced her role as a big sister. Her mom told Dateline that Kennedy loved her sisters. She said she would take them on drives around the city, blasting loud music and having a good time. Her aunt Marco said, quote, 
She was an excellent sister. She would come and get them and take them places. She would come over to the house and just spend quality time with them. Kennedy, according to her family, was a kind-hearted, soft person. Her aunt said that she called her her gentle giant. She said Kennedy is quiet and that it took a lot to push her buttons and make her mad. In 2022, Kennedy was living in St. Louis, Missouri, which is about 25 miles from Belleville. By then, she was 26 years old and had moved to the city with two roommates. And even though she no longer lived at home, Kennedy returned to Belleville often to spend time with her sisters and visit her mom. In early March, Kennedy's mom was in the hospital after undergoing a procedure. And so Kennedy, being the sister that she was, made plans to go back home for a few days to watch her sisters. According to her aunt, Kennedy had a car at the time, but she was having some car trouble. And so on March 3rd, 2022, she took the train to the Swansea Metrolink station, where she picked her up at around 12 noon. Her aunt said that after she picked Kennedy up, they went back to her house, and then she took her to the hospital so that she could get her mom, Chevy Tahoe, to drive while she was in town. Her mom said that after she picked up the truck, she took her sister swimming. Now, Kennedy's mom was being discharged from the hospital that night, And so, after spending time with her sisters, she went back to the hospital to pick her mom up. They arrived at the house at around 9.30 p.m. Kennedy's mom said that her plan was to stay the night at her house. After they arrived back at the house, her mom took a shower, but Kennedy had decided that she was going out. Her mom said that she didn't know about Kennedy's plans, and so when she got out of the shower— she assumed that she was upstairs. Her mom went and laid down, and so it was a couple of hours before she realized that Kennedy was not in the house. She said that when she looked out of the window, she saw that her truck was gone, and that's when she realized that Kennedy wasn't home. It was around midnight, she said, when she texted Kennedy to ask her where she went, and Kennedy texted her back telling her that she would be back in a minute. And so her mom went and laid back down. But when she woke up again around 2 a.m., Kennedy was still not home. And so she texted her again. But this time, she didn't get a response. When she woke up the next morning and Kennedy still wasn't home, she began to worry. She was supposed to be there to take her sisters to school that morning, and so the fact that she had not come back home was strange. Her mom said that she tried to call Kennedy repeatedly, but she was not answering the phone. Quote, whenever I would call her, she'd answer the phone. If I text her, she would text back within five minutes, her mom told Dateline. And Kennedy had always been a very reliable, responsible young woman, and so The fact that she went out and never came back and now was not answering the phone or responding to texts meant that something was wrong. And so her mom called the police to report her daughter missing. After Kennedy's mom called and reported her daughter missing, police were able to trace her whereabouts the night before. They discovered that Kennedy left her mom's house at around 10.30 p.m., and was last seen on her mom's ring camera getting into the Chevy Tahoe. According to police reports obtained by Dateline, Kennedy's roommate told police that he last saw her at the Show Me Sports Bar and Grill located in St. Charles, Missouri. She had come there to meet a group of friends who were out celebrating a friend's birthday. The camera footage from inside the bar showed Kennedy and her friends eating and drinking, and there was nothing out of the ordinary about the footage. But at around 1.10 a.m., according to the report, the cameras inside the bar capture Kennedy getting up and leaving, and then she's seen getting into the Tahoe. According to one of her friends that was there, Kennedy just got up and left without saying anything. He said that when he went outside, he saw her crying in the car. And when he asked her if she was okay, she told him that she was going to be fine and that nothing was wrong. 
It's not clear if Kennedy ever went back inside, but when her friends left the bar, Kennedy was still there. And so they all left the parking lot in their separate cars at the same time. Her friends said that they were all driving down the highway in the same direction towards Kennedy's house in St. Louis when suddenly Kennedy accelerated past them. When the friends arrived at her house, the one that she shared with her roommates, they saw Kennedy in the white Chevy pulling away from the house, and they never saw her again. In the days following Kennedy's disappearance, her family searched the area around where she was last seen and passed out flyers. They also, of course, turned to social media, but there wasn't any information about Kennedy's whereabouts. Her aunt Marco told Fox 2, quote, We've been running around the neighborhood looking for Kennedy, putting up flyers. We've also been putting it on Facebook, Twitter, to see if anybody can just come up with anything. If they've seen her anywhere, something, because we haven't heard nothing. The mystery surrounding Kennedy's disappearance deepened when the car that she was driving was found. On March 10th, six days after Kennedy was last seen driving her mother's white Chevy Tahoe, that SUV was found abandoned two miles from where Kennedy lived in St. Louis. When police arrived at the location, there were no visible signs of damage to the vehicle, which left a lot of unanswered questions about why the car was there in the first place. They processed it for DNA and fingerprints before returning the car to Kennedy's mom, who said that the car had been cleaned out and that there were several things missing from inside the vehicle. But none of Kennedy's personal belongings were found in or around the vehicle. When police spoke to neighbors near where the truck was parked, they were told by at least one of them that they had observed the car being dropped off by a black male. Although police did dust for fingerprints and collect DNA, they have been unable to identify who dropped the car off there. We also don't know when the car was dropped off either. As far as the investigation, police will only say that this is an open and active investigation. They told Dateline that they conducted several interviews in March and May of 2023 and have entered Kennedy's DNA into the national database. But in the weeks and months following her disappearance, there hasn't been any new information about Kennedy's whereabouts. Her mom told Dateline that she doesn't know what happened to her daughter, but she is almost positive that she would not have just left. Quote, I don't see her pecking up or just leaving and not saying anything, she said. I think something happened to her. As of right now, Kennedy is still considered a missing person, but police have not ruled out the possibility of foul play. There are still so many unanswered questions about Kennedy's disappearance. When her mom was asked about why she may have gotten upset that night, she had no idea. I mean, perhaps she received a text on her phone that upset her or saw something on social media. I mean, investigators haven't said if they checked her phone records or if they found anything there. Fifteen months have gone by since Kennedy was last seen. And like with all missing person cases, time has really only made things worse. It's not clear where the investigation into her disappearance stands today or what information police have been able to find in the months since. All we know for sure is that Kennedy is still missing. And the void left by her absence is felt deeply by all who do and loved her. Friends and family have held vigils, organized searches, and tirelessly shared her story on social media in the hope of keeping her memory alive and generating new leads. In the midst of the unending pain, there still lies a glimmer of hope. Hope that one day, the missing pieces of this puzzle will fall into place and the truth will emerge. But until that day arrives... They have to keep going, living each day with the weight of the uncertainty. Both of these stories 
are less than two years old. And so I know that there are people out there who saw something, who know something. Kennedy Walton was last seen on March 4th, 2022 in St. Louis, Missouri. She was driving a 2007 white Chevy Tahoe. She was last seen wearing a black jacket, black leggings, and a black shirt. Kennedy is 5'10", and at the time of her disappearance, weighed 270 pounds. If you have any information about Kennedy's disappearance, please contact the Belleville, Illinois Police Department. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Threads.